welcome to the American Woodshop. I'm Scott Phillips and today it's all about upcycling a lost treasure. This is a beautiful drop leaf table, six feet long. We'll restore that and we'll put a new leg assembly under it with a traditional through tusked tenon. And it's made using a new technique and a new tool. So stay around. The American Woodshop with Scott Phillips is brought to you by Woodcraft since 1928, providing traditional and modern woodworking tools and supplies to generations of craftsmen. Woodcraft, helping you make wood work. Craig, from the first cut to the final assembly, providing woodworkers with products that help simplify woodworking challenges. Craig. Gorilla Glue, for the toughest jobs on planet Earth. For dry hands that crack and split. O'Keefe's Working Hands. Easy Wood Tools, American-made tools for all skill levels. Today we're upcycling wood, in this case, southern yellow pine that's quarter sawn, straight grain, no cathedral arch, it's straight all the way around, and it's been checked for metal, and this is one handy tool right here, and it's clear, and I've got the tenon laid out here, and we'll dog that between the bench dogs. And let's take a look at the table parts as they are prefixed here. Now, it all began when I was driving down the road and I saw this old table rickety and it was ready for the trash and asked the people if I could have it and they thought I was crazy. And they said, did you know that's veneered? You can't sand that defect out. Then so the veneer's not thick enough. And I said, no worries, I'm going to use milk paint and a special glaze, and they looked at me like I'd lost my mind. Wait until you see how this recycled top is joined to the custom-made through tenon tusked trestle table. That's a key that's called a tusk right there. And then this tenon that comes all the way through, shoulder to shoulder, it's four feet. An extra four and a half inches here, notched in to go through the mortise in the post. And then what will hold the leaves up are these wings right here that are hinged to the center post. And all of this is held together with these dominoes. And these are fantastic items right here. You put glue into that mortise, insert this tenon right there. In this case, it's just shy of four inches long. 14 millimeters thick, and that's how you join the post and the foot assembly. But to cut the mortise for this right here, we're going to use the domino machine that cuts the mortise. And whatever you do, be sure to read, understand, and follow all the instructions that come with the tools and products you use in your wood shop. Be safe. Now that's secured. Let me make a cut on my layout line. I put that cursor on my line, that's two and five eighths inches back from the end of this tenon, and watch this, cut, hold this flat. This is centered up, so when I turn it on, here we go. I'll turn that off. Let that dust extractor come to a stop, and there is that mortise that will accept that tusk. I'll make the other mortise, and the beautiful thing here is we have all the tenons that we need, European Beach, to make this secure. So I'll make this other cut, and from here it's over to the bandsaw. Okay, it all starts with this stretcher beautiful 140 year old piece of yellow pine and what I'll do is slide that domino as these are called these loose tenons and it helps if you just sand each outside edge so you get a perfect fit just like that now obviously this is in too far for the application of the tusk but it shows you how deep it goes and there you can see the tongue of the tenon laid out and we're ready to make that cut Set this out of the way, and here are all the other parts that we need. Now keep in mind that this tenon would come through this mortise on a traditional post, and if you look at this, 
This is a heavy-duty tenon, and that's a heavy-duty mortise. Now, with the dominoes, they're plenty strong to replace that technique, and it makes building this table so much easier. Now, turn on the dust collection here using a 3 8 inch blade, and now what I'll do is notch out the tenons. I have lots of tenon tension on this 3 8 inch blade. Leave the line. That's one shoulder. You can see that mortise pops right through. I need to make a cut right here. Get rid of that scrap stock safely. I always remove scrap from behind the blade. Never in front. Okay. One more cut, and you'll see the magic of this whole tenon. that off, dust collector's off, off, and you can see it's all the way through. And the reason you make this cut, first, it has to have the support of this flat edge for the fence of the domino machine to do that square, keep that square. I'll cut out the other end, and then we'll mill out the post using the pattern. Be careful with that blade, that was still drifting, it just now stopped. So many accidents happen after the machines are turned off and people don't pay attention to that. That falls in the category of be smart, be alert, work safely, and follow those instructions that come with the tools and products from your manuals with the tools that you use. So here is the through mortise all the way through. And for this, we need to make what are called a tusk. We need two tusks. And this is a, about an eight degree angle right there on the back edge. And that's so when it's wedged through, it presses against the post. Now, one side, the good side, is marked top. And I'll bring this up on this workbench. And then I'll clamp it down. These are handy. Auto action. Now I'm using what's called a microplane. These are surgically sharp edges here. This is for half inch, it's half inch square. Be very careful, cuts on the push stroke. I squared up the back shoulder. And now, just like this one right here, because that mortise is square, I need to cant that at a matching angle. So to do that, bring this around like so, and it's just by eye, and believe me, there are other ways to do this. None are faster and none are better. So I open this up ever so slightly, and I do the same exact thing to the other end, and that way this tusk will work properly, just like that. It needs a bit more work. But now, let's talk about cutting out the tusk. I'm using mahogany here because it's nice and strong, and this was scrap wood, and this needs to be milled down to a 9 16 inch thickness. I'll cut that down, then I'll cut the outside pattern out very carefully. So make those tough. Be sure to use a good push stick to finish this cut, and I'm using a resaw fence to control the thickness. With a little bit of sanding on the tusk, that is a perfect fit right there. And that will wedge against the two posts. And here's the post pattern. This is on inch and a half thick material here. And earlier at the miter saw, I used it to cross cut all the work pieces that I need for this project 
to the square finished lengths. The long stretchers, 57 inches long, end to end. The post that was cross cut square, that is 24 inches long, 11 inches wide. I needed the bottom foot, and that needs to be 24 inches long, and four and seven eighths inches wide on inch and a half stock that matches the post. And then I also cut the brace that will hold the leaf of the table up to a finished length of 12 inches. Once that's done, let's take a look at this pattern right here that was made. It's balanced left and right, and I have a mortise here that I'll cut out with a saw later on, but over at the band saw now, I'll just sculpt in the shape here and follow that around, leaving the line so I can sand down to it. Once you start a cut, flow with it. Don't do a notch cut to get right back, it'll make it rough. That's how the post is made. Now here's the base, 24 inches long, and I've got these templates at our website, so you can print those off there, and I'll just finish the base cuts. And from there, it's a matter of staying on the outside edge of the line. identical three-quarter inch leaf supports, 12 inches long, 11 inches wide, and I'll just cut those out. Then it's over to do some domino joint work. This is the extra large domino, that's a 14 millimeter cutter right there. And what I'm going to do is adjust the plunge depth down to 50 millimeters, bring this stop up, and that locks it in so it doesn't go in nearly as deeply. Just a hair more than half the length of this. And that's into the very bottom of the post where I have the lines laid out and the mating lines on the base all line up precisely. So to lock this down, and I'll plug this domino back in now into the extractor, bring that forward, and lock the bench dogs against the side, and that's rock solid right there, and I need to make those cuts. I do wear safety glasses all the time, and hearing protection helps. This needs to be adjusted, so the cut now, and I did that with this lever and adjusted the fence, is right in the middle. And I have the cursor right on the lines that you saw, and I'll make all the cuts. Let that come to a stop, and that certainly is a simple way to make these mortises. I'll do that for all of them, and we'll see the fit. So here you can see the holes in the milled faces here that create a perfect joint, but the moment of truth is to insert the dominoes right into the mortises, and those are loose tenons now, and this was just the first fit, the test fit as it were, and that is a perfect joint. Once that has good yellow wood glue in it and that cures out, there's no way that will ever fail. Now the other thing I need to do is bench dog this so that this is secure, and then I can drill a pilot hole right in the middle with a 3 8 inch bit, and then I'll use a saber or jigsaw 
in order to evacuate this to the cut line. A little bit of work with that microplane and it will be ready for the test bit. Now, let's take a look at this. That tenon, and that's the wide part of it, which needs to be up at the top. Goes straight on through, and that square all the way around, that's a perfect fit. And to get that, I used a microplane, and I also used this three and a half inch sander that's super aggressive. Has different settings for different functions, but I have it set aggressively here so that I can sand and profile the edges of all the work pieces. And the other thing, I like to use a low angle block plane carefully with the grain to go ahead and break any of the hard edges. Now I don't need to sand this perfectly because this is going to have milk paint on it. And I want a bit of that rough texture to add character to it. Now whenever I have curved areas, I like to use this oscillating spindle sander, bench top, great tool. And what I can do is hook that right into the dust extractor here and switch this around like so and then plug this right in so every time I turn on the sander we have good dust extraction and an N95 mask. So I'll sand all the profiles here then it's on to assembly. It takes teamwork to build a project like this and Susie's back now and we'll do the dry fit and here you can see on the very center are the leaf supports for the drop leaf table that we're going to recycle with milk paint and it needs to be flush with this other piece that I've added to the top of the post and this is called a cleat. It's two inches wide, 13 inches long, three quarters of an inch thick. Three big screws right here hold this to the post and then I have oversized holes here that we can dog the table to this cleat and that draws this whole assembly together. Now that needs to be flush with the cleat. You see how that hinges there. And I'll swing this over and we'll put everything together. And there's a bit of routing to be done in a second, but first we have to make sure of our fit. So we bring that through like that and the tusk goes up from the bottom because this whole assembly is upside down. Okay, you want to give it a tap? You. Yep. Okay. You flip it? Sure. Coming to me, right? Yes. And the moment of truth. There you go. And that is rock solid. Okay, so this is a much better table because now when we bring this recycled top to it, well, it's going to be sturdy and functional. So what's your plan here with the milk paint? Well, I'm going to get the milk paint on, get a good coat of that. Um, I'll do small brush strokes. As you can see, I've started. I'll do some brush strokes just to get the paint on there. And once I do my final coat, I'm going to do one fluid motion all the way across because I don't want to show those overlap lines. With milk paint, you got to be careful. And I love using the milk paint. It really gives it an aged look and feel. And before she did this, surface prep was key. I steel wooled this with 4 aught just to mellow it out and break the surface tension of the previous finish. But milk paint's the way to go. So it I'll really let you get is. that brushed out. Okay, I've got and, a good coat on here. And I'm off to do some routing work, so I'll let you get that top done. Okay, thanks. All right, I'll get a good coat on here. And then after that, we'll do two coats of Endurovar. Thanks, Scott. Okay. Get that in there. Okay, and I'm going to get one last coat, and I'll try to do that fluid motion on this last coat on this bottom line right here, because I don't want to leave any lines. All the way across like that. And you can kind of see it's getting that look. And it's not supposed to look new and all perfect and smooth. We want it to look aged because it's a neat old aged top. Yeah, that's looking good. And get some Enduro Bar on there and it should be perfect. It's time to glue the pieces together. Remember, it was just a dry fit. And so to that end, I put 
excellent wood glue into the mortises, not onto the dominoes, no point of that. These are the 14 millimeter because there's plenty of glue in there. I'm getting a bit of squeeze out there. And I want to make sure the lines here index to those lines there, glues in those mortises, brushed out with a good acid brush. And now I tap those home. And trust me when I tell you, you want your fingers well away from that seam when it comes together. Now, we go ahead and we put two clamps on this, making sure that the force keeps this in the same plane. You don't want to crimp this by bowing that. And so to that end, what I'll do is release this clamp. It's got a mind of its own. Very good. Slide this under, and that helps to equalize the clamping pressure. One on top, one underneath. And I'll draw that tight, and I'll let that cure for one hour. Then it's off to routing. The glue has cured now, so I'm going to use these clamps on this multifunction table to secure this workpiece. Handy things, and that's there to stay. And I'm using a round over bit with a shoulder and a piloted bearing on it to make this pass up to this. I want to keep that crisp and then this outside edge down to that. So the key is work with the rotation of the cutter. Cutter rolls this way, that means I'm feeding from left to right up to this point and then from right to left down to this point, always working with the cutter. So take your time. Remember to hold the router base completely flat to the material that you're routing. That way you don't get dips and burn marks. The other thing, the router produces a lot of fine dust, so I have a shop-wide ambient air cleaner running in the background. You can hear it. And that helps to keep that fine dust out of the air and into that one micron filter bag. So I just take my time working with the grain and the rotation of the bit to get the best result. It's really important to take light passes with an aggressive bit. This bit is a small profile, so I can do the entire profile in one pass. And this is a pet peeve I have on safety. Do not raise the router off the material until that bit has come to a complete stop. So that is the easy way and a beautiful way to profile this. And when that gets sanded lightly and gets a good paint and an Endurovar top on it, boy, this is gonna look good. I'll do the other one, we're off to the races. Okay, everything has been painted with the milk paint and most of it's finished with the Endurovar. Get this in there. And as you can see on the tabletop here, I've got four coats here and it's got a nice sheen and that's virtually waterproof. Through the middle, it's only got two coats. So we'll get to that later and make that solid also. Okay, and over here I want you to see, I've fixed the cleat once it's been painted onto the top of the post. Three heavy duty screws here and then this small screw right here in the oversized hole will float with the tabletop. This would be across the grain of the tabletop. It could split out. That allows it to move without splitting the top. So here's how everything goes. I'll get the other end on here, just like so, and slide the tusk in. Boy, that's a tight fit. And that's the way you want it. Don't paint the tusk until you know you have a perfect fit, and that's rock solid. And then from there, what we're going to do is flip the tabletop over on this table and then fix the cleats to the bottom of the table so the leaves function properly. Once that's done, it's on to the final reveal. Okay, the moment of truth, the Ready? grand reveal. Okay, on over here. There we go. And let's put this other leaf up, bring the supports out. Very nice. 
Rock solid. Not as strong as I thought my, it was. My end worked great. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it, it from the American Wood Shop. And Susie, you have a job to do. Yep, time to get the last two coats of Endurovar, and then the whole tabletop will be waterproof. This is going to look so beautiful. And I love that it has a drop leaf because we can drop the leaves, tuck it along the wall, and, and get it out when we need extra table space. Comfortable for eight. Well, that's a wrap for season 22 of the American Woodshop. Season 23 is all about... Lost and found in the American Woodshop. You'll have to stay tuned and see. <laughs> okay, <laughs> see you. Thanks for being with us this see season. See ya. Woodcraft, since 1928. Providing traditional and modern woodworking tools and supplies to generations of craftsmen. Woodcraft, helping you make wood work. Craig, from the first cut to the final assembly, providing woodworkers with products that help simplify woodworking challenges. Craig. Gorilla Glue, for the toughest jobs on planet Earth. For dry hands that crack and split. O'Keefe's Working Hands. Easy Wood Tools, American-made tools for all skill levels. For more information behind the scenes at the American Woodshop, go to our website for complete details on tips and like us on Facebook.